What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the new SYNC 4 system inside of the 2021 Ford Edge Titanium. This is a very straightforward process, should only be about 10-15 minutes or so to go through the entire system. It's new, it's bright, it's beautiful, they've done some incredible things with it. Let's dive into it and see how the SYNC 4 system works inside of the new 2021 Ford Edge. <music> All right, now this is the all new SYNC 4 screen inside of the 2021 Ford Edge. Now this is the way it's going to look regardless of whatever trim level that you're on. So we've got a beautiful setup there. So we've got our map display. We've got some basic settings and our climate control settings. So in the 2020 Edge, climate control settings were a little bit further down. They've moved everything. It's now completely digital. This really reminds me of the Mustang Mach-E. If you haven't seen that video yet, drop down in the description below. I do a full vehicle walk around and take that thing for a test drive as well. But this really does remind me of that Mustang Mach-E screen. So I love the look. Nice and it really is kind of, it, it just looks beautiful. It's really pushed into the dash nicely and it just kind of stands out in a really, really great way. Now, when it comes down to feature sets, there's quite a lot of stuff to cover off inside of this vehicle. So let's kind of go a little bit one at a time. So starting off, we're actually going to begin at the very top left-hand side, so in the car there. And that's going to give us the ability to change on our treble mid-range base and a few other things. We've got our balanced fade, which we can just kind of grab and select that and drop as necessary. If you kind of mess up the positioning, we're just going to do a reset, and that's going to bring us back to our master reset, or our factory default, I should say. We've got our speed compensated volume, as well as our stereo mode, so different modes there. Next up, moving into radio. So radio, very straightforward. We've got a number of different preset pages. I always recommend turning this to the maximum. So we'll go six pages there. We've got our HD radio as well as the radio text. Radio text, I'll just keep that stuff on and I'll explain why in just a second. So let's swipe up for a second and we're gonna click on our radio along the bottom there. So as you can see, we can change between either AM, FM, Sirius, XM. If we had our phone connected and other things, those would also show up as available sources. But if we look at available presets, so we did change it out so that we had even more preset pages there. So we've got up to 30 individual presets, which are a mix between AM, FM, Sirius, XM, et cetera. Now, one of the nice things is that if we are in a Sirius XM station, or if we've moved ourselves to Sirius XM along the top, watch this. So we just hit the button along the top there, and we can now jump into Sirius XM. So we've got our favorites, listening history, different settings so if we want to block out explicit content or specific channels we've got the capabilities to do that so really really neat and then when we jump back into let's go either AM or FM go back into our vehicle along the top there it's now changed us back to the radio instead Moving into our phone list. So the phone, one of the nice things about this SYNC 4 system is that it does support wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which is new for 2021. So on your phone, in order to set up a phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android, we'll start off on the iPhone side of things. All you're going to do is just make sure your phone's unlocked, and we're just going to go into our settings, make sure your Bluetooth is turned on, and get, actually, next thing, we're going to have to make sure we hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, so as you can see there, Ford Edge is showing up, so we're just going to select that. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, and we need to make sure that the pin numbers match up, which they do, so we're going to hit yes and pair. Allow contacts and favorites to sync. Yep, we want to do that. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use SYNC's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Boom! We are connected. Now, as you can see there, we've got 911 assist that's shown up as well, so select that one. And the big reason why is because if you're ever in an accident and the vehicle senses the collision, it's automatically going to dial 911 for you. So just make sure that one's selected, hit finish. And lastly, it's also saying that my phone supports Apple CarPlay. So in order to enable, back on my phone, it's saying use CarPlay with Sync 4. Yep, we want to do that. Okay, there we go. Phone supports Apple CarPlay, so we need to make sure that we enable it there. Connecting to CarPlay. All right, and we are now connected. So as you can see there, we've got my phone messages. And one of the nice things is that if your Edge does not have maps built in, you can use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wirelessly to connect to either Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Waze. And you can use those directly through this middle screen, which is incredible. Like I love the fact that we've got that capability to do it because if we don't want to rely on the factory navigation because maybe you prefer to use Waze instead, you've got the ability to easily do that. Moving back, as you can see, we've got some basic settings. We've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app, so we can use certain apps directly through this middle screen. Now, one thing to point out, if for whatever reason your app's not showing up, all you're gonna do is make sure that your operating system's up to date, and from there, you're gonna make sure that your app is up to date, and then you're set to go. 
Now, a couple of things, and one of the nice things that I do like about CarPlay is that if we go into the general settings on our phone, we can go to CarPlay, we can select the vehicle, and we can now customize the tray. So where that comes into play is maybe you have a tendency to listen to your podcast more. We can drag that to the top and that's a dynamically adjusted it. Maybe you prefer to use Waze as well. So we've got both of them kind of simultaneously there. Now, as you're playing around with this, if you find that you've kind of done one too many things and you don't like the look of it, on your phone, all you're gonna do is just hit the reset button along the top, reset layout, and watch what happens. So it's gonna zero everything out, default you back to that factory default setting there instead. Now we've got the ability to easily disable and toggle CarPlay on or off as necessary. So we've got my phone list, we can look at my phone, we can disable CarPlay, we can go to my phone settings, so we can completely remove it as well. So if we wanted to auto maybe disable Apple CarPlay, look at that, fully disabled now, but my phone is still connected over Bluetooth. So we've got a lot of flexibility when it comes down to it, and that's the basics of connecting an iPhone to this new Sync 4 system. Connecting an Android device is literally the exact same process. So all we're gonna do is just make sure that we go into our Bluetooth settings. And as you can see there, we've got my Bluetooth turned on. So we're just gonna hit add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And we've got forward edge that's shown up. So we're just gonna collect, uh, connect to forward edge and watch this. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. So exact same thing. We just need to make sure that we're pairing there with the proper vehicle. So pins match up. So we're going to hit yes and pair. All right, here we go. So as you can see there, I am connected. Now the device itself does support Android Auto. So we want to make sure that we enable that in just a second. So on the screen there, it's also asked me, do I want to allow access to my contacts? Yes, we want to allow. All right, and in order to use it, we just need to go to my car screen. So we need to enable Android Auto. Look at this, look at this. Android Auto would like to pair, so we're just going to select Next. Three, two, one, and we are connected. Look at this, look at this. So one of the nice things, we can use maps on there as well. So if you have a tendency to, I don't know, maybe you prefer to use Apple or Google Maps, I should say. If you had Waze connected, it would work directly through this middle screen as well. So as I mentioned, you don't have to rely on factory navigation anymore. You can now use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Android, Google, whatever maps you want to directly through this middle screen. It's really, really nice and it's laid out extremely well. Now, very similar to the Apple side of things. So if on our phone, we do a search for Android Auto, there we go, as you can see, we've got some basic app settings and app information. So we just go to app settings and look at this. So we've got the car that we're currently connected to. We've got the ability to use our Google detection. We can resume media. We've got our Google assistant and a number of other things. We've got the flexibility to kind of change things around a little bit as well. So if you have a tendency to maybe use certain apps or you don't wanna use certain apps, we can kind of do a mix and match and kind of play around with them. But one of the nice things is that we do, so look at that. So customized launcher, very similar to what we saw on the Apple side of things, we can kind of drag these around if you have a tendency to listen to certain ones. Now, one thing that's different on the Android side of things is that we do need to actually reset Android Auto in order for this to work. So we just have to relaunch it in order for it to work, but you can dynamically update this as well. Moving back, so very similar to the Apple side of things, we can, we've got our Siri dictation. We've also got Google dictation, so our Google Assistant. So we've got our notifications and our Google Assistant. So we can either press that button or we can say, hey, Google. Look at that. So it's brought up our Google Assistant as well. Now, one thing to note is that in Canada, we do not have the Ford Alexa app. However, if you're down in the States, you've got the ability to use Ford Alexa directly through this middle screen as well. And that literally are the basics of setting up a phone and very straightforward. We've got the ability to go back into our screen there. We can look at my phone list in order to see what phones are currently connected. Because we've got multiple phones connected, we can disable them, we can look at settings, we can set it as a favorite device if you've got multiple phones connected, and we can completely remove it. So we hit remove, and as you can see there, it is now fully removed from the vehicle, and I've just got my iPhone connected there. And that's the basics of how you set up a phone on this Sync, 3, or Sync 4 screen. Now, as we start to move down, we've got some more advanced settings, so some vehicle settings there. So we've got our rear occupant alert. Watch what happens when I go to turn the vehicle off. That is really cool. That's a great setting, especially if you've got young kids. Just a little reminder and make sure we check that back seat because God forbid something were to happen with the kids back there. So just really, really nice that we've got the capability to do that. And we've got the ability to disable that as well. So you don't have to worry about anybody in the back seat. You can disable it if you'd like to. We've got our serial number as well as our keypad code. So keypad code gives us the ability to access the vehicle using a five digit keypad on the outside of the vehicle. Let's hop outside to see how that looks. 
All right, now taking a look on the outside of the vehicle. So as you can see there, we've got a little keypad along the driver's side door there. So that's going to give us the ability to enter in the five digit number in order to be able to unlock this thing if we want to use this in order to be able to unlock the vehicle. And we've also got the capabilities to press and hold the bottom two buttons. So the seven, eight, and then the nine, zero. So we can press and hold those ones in order to be able to lock the door as well. Now there is going to be a five digit number that's going to be standard from the factory, but we've got the ability to enter in a number of other codes if we've got a five digit number that we're going to remember easier. And that's going to be the basics of the vehicle settings. We've got some general settings. So tons of general settings there. We've got the ability to change between English, Spanish, or French, kilometers or miles, Celsius or Fahrenheit, the beeping that we're getting here. If that beep drives you crazy, you've got the ability to disable it. We've got some basic sync info, software licenses, feedback, and a reset. So the reset, if for whatever reason, you've got to reset a few things. So a couple things, Ford Pass gives you the ability to remote start the vehicle directly through your cell phone and a few other things. If for whatever reason, Ford Pass has given you issues, you've got the ability to reset that. And we can also do a master reset. So master reset is going to bring us back to our factory defaults. So really useful if you're selling the vehicle, you can just hit master reset to bring you back to those factory settings instead. Moving into our display. So this thing is big, it's bright, it's beautiful. But if you find it's a little bit too much, we've got the ability to move to a calming screen instead. So as you can see there, very, very simple layout. Touch to bring it back to life. Jumping back in there into our display. And we've also got the ability to adjust the brightness of the screen. So if you want a little bit darker, a little bit brighter, or we can just reset it back. And the mode that we're looking at right now, it is technically the light mode. So when we're in the light versus the dark, it's going to depend on how bright it is outside. If we're in auto, we can permanently lock it out to this dark look instead, which looks incredibly sharp. We can lock it out permanently to the light mode, or we can let the vehicle de determine if it should be the daytime or that nighttime mode that's showing instead. So again, it really a matter of personal preference there. And we've got a number of other settings. So let's look into our clock now. So clock, we've got the ability to adjust either one hour or one minute. We've got AM, PM. We can switch to that military time, so that 24 hour time instead. And we've got an auto time update. So if we're going in between either different GPS locations, so if we're, let's auto, maybe going from the East Coast to the West Coast, so changing time zones, or if you're, I don't know, maybe daytime, daylight savings time, so we're springing forward or falling back an hour, the vehicle is automatically going to adjust that for us. We've got some basics for connectivity. So we've got connected vehicle features. So as you can see there, so we can turn the vehicle connectivity on or off and we've got the ability to share vehicle data. We've got Sirius XM as well. So the vehicle itself is equipped with factory navigation. So connected navigation. When you get a new Ford vehicle, you've got three years of service that's included for that connected navigation. After that, it's gonna be a paid subscription. But as I mentioned, you've got the ability to just use your factory settings there instead. So if you wanna disable Sirius XM, you've got the capabilities to do that. Bluetooth, we've got the ability to toggle that on or off and we can change our vehicle name as well. And that's kind of nice because that's new for the 2021 model year. Wireless app projection, as well as our Wi-Fi networks. So I definitely recommend a connecting to Wi-Fi at home. And the big reason why is because we've got over the air updates. So if the vehicle senses that there's an update available, it's automatically going to check and then schedule the available update. So I definitely recommend connecting to a Wi-Fi network at home. Vehicle hotspot. The vehicle can be used as a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. Now you do need a mobile only plan directly through a cell phone provider in order to be able to get that. But it's nice to know that you've got the capabilities to do that. So you can kind of see what's going on with your data usage and you can turn that hotspot on or off as necessary. We've got the ability to toggle mobile apps on or off. So I want to enable the apps and we've got the ability to look at a few different things. So we've got LiveX Live. So we've got different permissions and things like that that we can set. There are no specific permissions that we need in order to use them directly through this middle screen. They'll just be usable, which is fantastic. Moving into 911 Assist. So we've already touched base on that. So 911 Assist, that essentially is going to automatically dial 911 for us if the vehicle senses a, a collision. So that's really, really useful. We've got our voice control settings. So voice control setting, ton of different options that are available there. We've got the ability to look at some basic help. We've got the ability to listen for a wake word. So the wake word is actually an interesting one. So if you have a preference for there, but I want you to listen for a second. Okay, Ford. 94.9. Tuning to FM 94.9. So we can use our voice in order to wake the vehicle up to listen to either tune to a radio station, make a phone call. We can set navigation. We can do a number of other things. So we've got the capability just to select a word there. The advanced mode, that essentially means we're not gonna get as many notifications. So when I just changed the station, it let me know that it was changing to that certain station. Now listen to this. Okay, Ford. 97.7.
Okay, so we didn't get a notification that it was changing stations, but if we jump back into our home screen again, as you can see there, it did change the actual radio station that we were listening to. So that's really, really nice. We've got that flexibility and that capability there is that in that advanced mode, we just won't get as many notifications as we go. And then we've got a few other ones. So that phone confirmation, do we want to call such and such person? Yes or no. And then we've also got our voice command list. So that list is what comes up when we press the voice command button on the steering wheel. So when we do that, this is the command list. So whether or not you want that one to show up is going to be a matter of personal preference. Scrolling down, we've got our valet mode. Valet mode, we enter a four digit number and it locks the screen out. So you can't access any element of the screen until you re-enter that four digit number ambient light. There is ambient light that's going to be all throughout the vehicle in a couple different areas. We've got the ability to turn it on or off and we can adjust the brightness from there. Now it is only a flat ambient light inside of this vehicle, but you've got it in a few different spots. So the cup holders by your feet and then just along the driver's side door there as well. And that is going to be the basics of these basic vehicle settings. Next up, as we start to move up, we've got another button along the top there. We've got a hot button in order to press into our radio, phone, navigation, and a number of other things. There is a digital owner's manual now, so if there's a certain button or you're getting some sort of a weird message on the middle screen, you can jump in the manual in order to figure out what's going on there. You've got your Ford Pass button, LiveX Live is a radio app, so LiveX Live, Spotify, etc. will work directly through this middle screen. So with our notes, as you can see there, we've got the capabilities to kind of easily write things in if we need to. So if we're, you know, we need to make a quick note, we've got the capabilities to do that. And we've got the ability to erase, we can save it. We've got a number of other brush strokes that we can use and numbers and a number of other things as well. So it's, it's kind of an interesting one, fairly neat, but you can look through some saved notes as well if we had some saved options there. Now we're pressing this button along the top, that's going to either increase or decrease the size there. Now this is actually an interesting one because this is gonna be dynamic based off of what we've looked at previously. So we can do a hot button press back into our radio if we want to. We can jump back into the owner's manual and a few other things. So as you can see there, we're back inside of our radio. Let's do a quick audio test. Incredible. Now this is the titanium version of the vehicle, so we've got a 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system, which sounds absolutely incredible. So really, really nice. But as I mentioned, so these ones here, these are gonna dynamically shift depending on what you've done previously inside of the vehicle. I'll give you an example. Let's say if we hop into my phone for a second, watch this. It's gotten rid of a few things. We jump into manual for a second there, and it's pushing things out. So it's whatever one you're typically using and whatever you're normally using, that's gonna show up there. Now, as I mentioned, I do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay installed. So on the Apple CarPlay side of things, I've got it disabled. So I've got the ability if I wanted to, to run off of Waze on my phone, or I can just stick to the factory navigation built into this thing instead. Well, folks, that was a look at how the system works. What did you think? I personally love the look of it. It's got that Edge ST style look to it. I think it looks really sharp. If you run into any problems or have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know and I'll talk you through any problems you might be having. If you enjoyed the content, give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing, but definitely share it with your social networks. And until I see you next time, make sure you stay safe.